Hello students. Now moving towards the end of unit 3. Let's have a quick revision that what we have studied in our previous lecture. In last lecture, we have seen Gaussian distribution which is also called as normal distribution. And we have seen some properties of your Gaussian PDF as like the Gaussian PDF it is like bell like structure it has there. The Gaussian PDF it has an even structure of symmetry about the peak. After that we came to know that probability of obtaining this uh, random variable x it is one half and the area under this Gaussian PDF it is what unity. After that we have seen that what is Gaussian process it is there. In Gaussian process basically Gaussian process it is what uh, important family of your random process. Then we came to know that a random variable or the process x of t is a Gaussian process if every linear function of x of t is what Gaussian random variable. After that we studied central limit theorem. In central limit theorem we studied that PDF of several independent random variable is to be obtained. Then we are going to use this central limit theorem and we also seen if there are two random variables are th there what would be the uh, PDF of the resultant uh, random variable. Then we have seen if the number of random variables are going to increase towards infinity then the PDF of the resultant that the convolution it is going to take place and it represents as your Gaussian PDF. After that we studied the properties of your Gaussian process and later on we studied what noise that what is noise it is there. And then we came to know that there is internal noise, external noise it is there. After that we have seen that what is internal noise that is random movement of electrons in ele uh, uh, electrons in electronic circuit as like your resistors, diodes, transistors and we have seen one by one each type of your noise that is thermal noise, short noise, what is flicker noise, transit noise. Then we have seen that external noise that it is categorized as a man-made noise and natural uh, noise. So external noise which comes from sources over which do not have we have do not have little control or no control over it as like your motors, generators, then industrial uh, manufactured equipment it is there. Then we came to know that atmospheric uh, sources that is your electrostatic uh, noise it is there then how it is cosmic noise it is there, solar noise it is there. So let us move on to our today's topic that is your narrow band noise. Narrow band noise. Generally, the pre-processing of the signal is needed at the communication receiver and this pre-processing it can be done by using what narrow band filter. Now, the bandwidth of this narrow band filter it should be just large to enough pass the signals of interest only but the bandwidth it should not be large enough to admit excessive noise through the receiver. So the noise process operating at the output of such filter is called what narrow band noise. This is your narrow band filter. Consider then n of t small n of t it is produced at the output of this narrow band filter in response to the sample function of small w t which is nothing but what white Gaussian noise process of zero mean and unit power spectral density which is applied to this filter input. Now this small w t and this small n of t are nothing but what sample functions. These are the sample functions of what? This is 
wide gaussian noise process w capital w of t and this is a noise process capital n of t at the output of this filter so capital w of t it is nothing but your wide gaussian noise process whereas small wt it is nothing but what sample function of your wide gaussian noise process similarly capital n of t it is nothing but what noise process at the output of your filter whereas small n of t it is nothing but sample function of this noise process and what is this capital SNF? It is nothing but your power spectral density of the noise N of T. So let the transfer function of this filter is what denoted by H of F. So the PSD that is a power spectral density of N of T it is given by what? Square of the transfer function into the power spectral density of your W T capital W T which is nothing but your what wide Gaussian noise as we know the PSD the power spectral density of wide Gaussian noise is what unity so that's why this is the power spectral density of N of T it would be given what H of F square now this is the figure of your power spectral density of what narrow band noise so as you can see this is the spectral components which is found at plus fc that is center frequency or carrier frequency fc and it is at minus fc so what is the bandwidth is fc plus b and this is your fc minus b so fc plus b minus fc minus b so it would be what twice of b similarly it is a spectral component at this negative side so what is the conclusion that you can draw from this it is that the shape of this power spectral density is obtained by squaring by squaring the shape of transfer function h of f of this narrow band filter now uh, we are going to represent the narrow band uh, noise that is n of t in terms of its what in phase and quadrature components so now we are going to represent this narrow band noise in terms of in phase and quadrature component so let n suffix plus of t it is going to denote the what pre envelope and n tilde of t it is going to denote the what complex envelope of the narrow band noise n of t and also let the power spectrum of n of t is centered about the frequency fc as just we have shown in figure then we can write that n plus of t is equal to n of t plus j n kappa cap of t make it as equation number two now what is this n cap of t it is nothing but your hilbert transform of n of t as we know that a fourier transform you know it going to provide the mathematical basis for analyzing and designing what frequency selective filters for the separation of signals on the basis of their frequency contents now there is another method of separating signals which is based on was phase selectivity which uses phase shift between the uh, signals you know to achieve the desired separation so uh, when the phase angles of all the components of a signals are shifted by plus minus uh, 90 degree then the resulting function of time is known as what Hilbert transform of the signal so basically this is used in specially for time domain purpose and 
as we know this n tilde of t is equal to n plus of t n suffix plus of t e raised to minus j 2 pi f c t this n tilde of t it is nothing but your what complex envelope of the narrow band noise n of t so now this complex envelope it can be expressed in terms of what in phase and quadrature component so make it this equation number three so therefore n tilde of t is equal to what n of i t plus j n of q t n of i t it is nothing but your in phase component and n of q t it is nothing but what quadrature component of your noise n of t now by combining this equation 2 3 and 4 we get that in phase component that is n i of t is equal to what n of t cos 2 pi f c t plus n cap of t sin 2 pi f c t make it as equation number fifth second is n of q t that is a quadrature component of your noise n of t which is equal to n cap of t cos 2 pi f c t minus n of t sin 2 pi f c t make it as equation number sixth now by eliminating this n cap of t from equation fifth and sixth what you would get it is n of t which is is equal to n of i t cos 2 pi f c t minus n q of t sin 2 pi f c t make this equation number seven it is one of the most important equation that we have represented this narrow band noise in terms of it what in phase component and this quadrature component now this is the figure of the sample function of your narrow band noise you can see that the distance between these two squares it is nothing but your one of fc duration see this is your noise in time domain and this is the difference between the uh, minimum peak and the maximum peak value which is given by 1 upon bandwidth that is in uh, uh, difference between what maximum peak and minimum peak so now you have seen that how we have represented your narrow point noid in terms of its in phase and quadrature components now we are going to see the generation of your narrowband process from its in phase and quadrature components the in phase and quadrature components that is n of i t and n of q t are multiplied with this what cosine and sine carrier respectively that is n of i t it is multiplied by with cos of 2 pi f c t and quadrature component n of q t is multiplied by what this sine carrier sine 2 pi f c t at the output of the output of this multiplier they are what added so at the output of this adder narrow band process is obtained and this is what your narrow band noise synthesizer and this is what your extraction of your in phase and quadrature components of your narrow band process once this is the generation that is the n of t now extraction how you are going to extract this in phase and out uh, quadrature components so this is uh, the your uh, process of obtaining your in phase and quadrature components so let this two low pass filters used over here are ideal uh, low pass filter and the bandwidth of this low pass filter suppose it is a b capital b hertz
and this bandwidth is equal to one half of the bandwidth of your n of t so the incoming signal this incoming narrow band signal n of t is multiplied with what cosine and sine carriers then the product signals this is the n1 of t and this is n2 of t these n1 of t and n2 of t are passed through this low pass filter and the signal is thus n of t is thus you know extracted in in phase and the quadrature component at the output of this low pass filter so this is what narrow band noise analyzer so hope you understood the generation and extraction of your narrow band process so if in examination if this question it is asked so we expect from you that you should write that what is narrow band noise after that it is uh, expected from you that you should draw the power spectral density diagram as well as uh, the sample function in time domain of your narrow band noise it is expected and uh, this shape it is what again uh, we are going to obtain uh, by what squaring the transfer function of this uh, narrow band filter ideally this it should not be like this shape it should be what uh, the uh, pulse a shape but since it is not a ideal low pass filter so you would get this kind of shape after that one we also expect from you which is must that you should represent your uh, noise uh, band you know in terms of uh, mathematically that you should denote that noise it is uh, shown by means of this in phase and quadrature component so this is the minimum thing that we expect from you but if time permits then you also draw or uh, this how we are going to generate and extract your noise process so we studied narrow band noise so basically narrow band noise it is what it is the noise process which is appearing at the output of narrow band filter is narrow band noise so it means the pre processing of the signal which is being done at the communication receiver by using this narrow band filter and the bandwidth of this narrow band filter it should be a large enough in order to pass the signals of interest but it should not it should not be uh, too much large the bandwidth it should not be too much large in order to admit the excessive noise in that after that we have seen the spectral components of your uh, noise narrow band noise after that we have seen that how the narrow band noise it is represented in terms of its in phase and quadrature phase components and at the last we discuss that how the generation of your in phase and quadrature of your components from the narrow band process and how the extraction of your in phase and quadrature phase of narrow band process how it is being done so it is your assignment number 6 of unit number 3 so please note down this assignment and please note down this new email address so for any questions or feedback you can post it to this new email address shown on the screen so it's about the today's lecture thank you very much